State whether true or false. Here are six statements about sets. Pause the video and figure out which statements are true and which statements are false. All right, let's do this together. If you read the first statement, it says X belongs to P and P belongs to Q, then X belongs to Q. Sounds very logical. If something belongs to P and P belongs to something else, then this X should belong to Q. So seems right, seems logical. This should be correct. This should be true. Let's read the next one. If P is a subset of Q and Q belongs to R, then P belongs to R. If P is sitting inside Q and Q is sitting inside R, then P should be sitting inside R. This also sounds logical. This also sounds correct. But what if I told you that both of these statements are incorrect? Both of these are false. To understand what's really going on, we have to stop looking at these statements and take a step back. We need to understand the fundamental difference between these two signs. This sign means that P is a subset of Q and this sign means that Q belongs to R. These two are different. Let's understand the difference through an example. Here's the set S. S is a set of these elements. The first question that I'll ask you is, how many elements does this set S have? Well, your answer is two. The set has two elements, but what are those elements? The first element is one, but the second element is not two. The second element is this two inside these brackets, which means the second element is this set two. The difference is subtle here. This set S does not contain the number two. It contains a set that contains the number two. And these two are very different things. Let's write these things down. S has two elements. The first one is one. So we can say that one belongs to S. The number one belongs to the set S. The element one belongs to set S. Then we have the number two or the element two. Two does not belong to the set S. The element one is in it, but the element two is not. Instead of two, we have this set that contains two. So we can say that this element, the set that contains two, this thing, this element belongs to S. And what about the set that contains the number one? Well, this does not belong to S because we don't have a set that contains one inside S. So this does not belong to S. And if you have elements that belong to S, you can use them to create subsets. For example, you can use this element one and create a subset of S. This set contains the element one and this set that contains the element one is a subset of S. S has these two elements. We've picked only one of them and created a smaller set. This is a subset of S. So the set that contains one is a subset of S. What about the set that contains two? Well, that's not a subset of S because to create this set, we need the element two and we don't have the element two inside S. So this set that contains two, that's not a subset of S. Instead of this, we have this set, the set that contains the set that contains two. Now this is a subset of S. How can this be subset of S? Because to create this, we need this element, the element that is the set that contains two. And that's something that we can find in the set S. So this is a subset of S. What about this? The set that contains the set that contains one. Well, this is not a subset of S because for that we need the element that is the set that contains one. And this is something that we don't have in S. This does not belong to S, so which means this is not. So let's recap one and the set that contains two. These two are elements of S, which means we can make subsets using these two. We can make a subset which has one. We can make a subset which has the set that contains two. And two does not belong to the set S, which means we can't create a subset that has two as the element. This is not a subset here. Now let's practice what we have learned. We have this set A, which has these two elements, one and two. And we'll compare A with four more sets. We have B, C, D, and E. Now pause the video and figure out which of these sets does A belong to? And which of these sets is A a subset of? Pause the video, try this on your own. Okay, let's do this together. Let's figure out the belongingness first. A is the set that contains the elements one and two. This itself is an element. Where do you see this in all four of these sets? Do you see this in B? No, you don't. You see the elements one and two, but you don't see the set that contains the element one and two. So A does not belong to B. You can't see this inside B, but you can see this inside C. 
C has an element that is the set that contains one and two. So A is an element of C, A belongs to C. A also belongs to D. In fact, the elements also belong to D and the set itself, the set A, that also belongs to D. So A belongs to D. What about E? Well, for E, we have these two elements, one and the set that contains two. We're looking for the set that contains both one and two. That's not there in E, so A does not belong to E. Now let's talk about the subsets. To make A, we need these two elements, one and two. From which of these sets can we buy, can we borrow the elements one and two? We can get them from B. B has one, two, three, and four. We can pick these two and create a subset. So A is a subset of B. Can we do this for C? From C, we can get one, we can get three and four, but we can't get two. To get two, we need to break this element. We need to break this set and take two from it. That's something that we can't do. We can only pick elements. So we have element one, but we don't have element two. So A is not a subset of C. It's surprising, I know. A belongs to C, but A is not the subset of C, but that's what it is. What about D? To make A, we need these elements one and two. D has elements one and two. So we'll take these two elements and create A. A is a subset of D. Again, it's surprising that we're not picking this element and creating A. We're picking these two elements to create A. What about E? E has this element one. That's something that we can take, but E does not have two. This means we can't make A from E, which means A is not a subset of E. All right, so now that we have our foundations sorted, let's go back to these statements. If you did not pause the video at the beginning, now is a good time to pause and try these statements on your own. Figure out which of these are true and false. You can pick examples from the screen. Okay, let's do this together. If element X belongs to P and the set P belongs to Q, then the element X belongs to Q. If this happens, then this definitely happens. That's what this statement is saying. So let's try proving this incorrect. Can we do that? Yes. Here's an example. Two, the element two belongs to A and A belongs to C. The set A, you can find that in this set C as an element. So two belongs to A and the set A belongs to C. But the element two does not belong to C. So two belongs to A, A belongs to C, but two does not belong to C. This means this statement is incorrect. This is false. I mean, this can happen, but we have to figure out a case where it doesn't, which means this statement is not always true. That's what we are looking for. So that's false. Let's look at the next one. If P is a subset of Q and Q belongs to R, then P belongs to R. Here's an example that proves this wrong. We have this set that contains two, this set is a subset of A. You can create this set from the elements of A. You can create a set that contains one. You can create the set contains two. So this can be created. This is a subset of A. And A belongs to C. This set, which contains one and two, it's an element of this set C. So A belongs to C. But this set that contains two does not belong to C. We don't have a set as an element that contains two. So this is not in C. The statement says it has to be. So if P is a subset of Q and Q belongs to R, then P definitely belongs to R. This is not true. This is false. Let's look at the next one. If P is a subset of Q and Q is a subset of R, then P is a subset of R. So if you can make P from Q and you can make Q from R, then you can definitely make P from R. Well, this seems logical. This seems true. And it is. Here's an example. If the set that contains two is a subset of A, and A is a subset of B. You can make A from the elements of B. This means you can also make this set that contains two from the elements of B. Because A is made up of the elements of B and two is made up from the elements of A. You can make this set that contains two from the elements of B. So this is true. Let's look at the next one. If P is not a subset of Q and Q is not a subset of R, then P is not a subset of R. Well, that's not how negative sentences work. This seems false. Let's take an example to prove this wrong. If two, the set that contains two does not belong to C, which it doesn't. And C does not belong to A. C clearly does not belong to A. This set is not an element of A, but this set that contains two is a subset of A. So this is not a subset of C and C is not a subset of A, but this is a subset of A. 
So this statement is wrong. Let's look at the next one. If x belongs to P and P is not a subset of Q, then x belongs to Q. Again, seems counterintuitive, seems false. Let's take an example, prove this wrong. If 4 belongs to B, 4 does belong to B, and B is not a subset of A, B is not a subset of A, you can't make B from the elements of A, but 4 does not belong to A. This statement says that if this happens, then this element X belongs to Q. Here, 4 belongs to B, B is not a subset of A, and 4 also does not belong to A. So this statement is incorrect. This is saying that 4 should belong to A, but it doesn't. So this is incorrect. We're on the last statement. If P is a subset of Q, and X does not belong to Q, then X does not belong to P. This seems right. Let's use an example to prove this right. We have A as a subset of B, A is a subset of B, and 5 does not belong to B. 5 in fact does not belong to any of these. 5 does not belong to B. 5 also does not belong to A. So this seems right. And this means we are done. I hope you understood the difference between this symbol belongs to and this symbol is a subset from these examples.